They're ready to go. The babies are like, what are you doing? Hey cuties. I like how she has waddles. See the little things on her neck? Oh yes. That's like goat jewelry. They don't do anything. <laughs> it's just I remember cute I was looking. watching someone's video. Oh, I think it was Living Traditions and they talked about their pigs having yeah, the, waddles, the waddles. And they said it was for milking and there was a goat. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed so hard. That is All right, ladies, y'all ready to go to your new home? Winona's that is so, so <laughs> big. <laughs> hey, pretty girl. See, she's got waddles too. She's really sweet on her. Winona's a little standoffish, but she she you know she's been handled and she milks well. All right, guys, I want to introduce you to my friend. This is Dom. Hi. I'd actually like you to tell them about your channel. But first, she is taking a couple of the goatee girls. We're downsizing our herd. We're actually sp splitting our herd up and sending it to a couple different places uh, just because I wanted them to go to places where they can actually be used. And so this is your first goats. Yes, yes. That's exciting. So will you tell them about your, your channel? Yeah, so my channel's called Faith Family Homestead, and right now we're still working on getting our garden in. I love gardening, so um, that's what I'm mostly filming, but we do have um, animals. So we have meat chickens and uh, egg layer chickens, and we have ducks, and we have turkeys coming. We're getting a rabbit, so full lots homestead. Lots of things, yeah. yeah. Lots of things <laughs> happening, and I, I just put out a video of me planting my roses. I got um, Belinda's oh. Blush Thornless oh. Arbor. Uh, they're thornless, so they're going to grow up above my gate, and it's going to be so pretty. I'm so, so excited. Pretty. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad the girls are going to you. I know yes. it's going to be good for them and good for you guys. Yeah, my first time um, <laughs> milking. <laughs> You're going to do awesome. <laughs> You're going to do awesome. <laughs> All right, so this is just cooling off came out of the oven a little bit ago and this is ground beef um, we have been for the last couple of years we've made a couple of trades and deals with friends who grow grass-fed beef and what I'm doing with this is I just cooked it and browned it with a trick I learned from some girls I follow on Instagram. Their Instagram is the Busy Homebodies. And they're, I love following this account. They're twin sisters and they are doing lots of turning their waiting room into a classroom. They live in an apartment and they like have been like raising quail on their patio. Just all kinds of really cool stuff. And I saw this trick on their Instagram account where you actually sprinkle baking soda on large amounts of meat. I have this big pan and this pan. And the baking soda causes the meat to brown even when you're cooking a whole lot at once. Because a lot of times if you're cooking a lot of meat at once, it, uh, it steams instead of browns. So you don't get that good texture. Well, I wanted to brown this, cook it, so I could then pressure can it. And I sprinkled the baking soda on. It's not a lot, I didn't really measure it, I just sprinkled it along the top and it really worked. So I've got another round to go in to cook, but I'm gonna do that after I milk the cows this evening. And I've got these jars sterilized, and they already went through the dishwasher, and I'm going to be packing those and pressure canning them. And then down here, I've got two big pans of beef broth. So there's lots of pressure canning in my future because I'm hoping to can all of this meat as well as this broth. So one of the things about growing your own food, you have to, you have to cook. Uh, you don't grow meals, you grow ingredients. You have to put them together. So um, one of the things that when you are cleaning up your diet, you're trying to live more sustainably, you're trying to grow your food. Um, it is hard when you're busy, you have a lot of mouths to feed, to not have convenience foods. But when you start reading labels and you learn what all's in those convenience foods, you don't want to eat stuff like that anymore, you kind of go to this whole scratch cooking and you can begin to believe that there is no convenience in it. And that's really not true. There, there can be convenience in real food and things like pressure canning jars of ground beef is a huge step to having convenient meals because I can take these jars of ground beef and I can um, just dump them in a pan with some spaghetti sauce, boil some noodles, and we have dinner. I can make lasagna. You can make um, all kinds of casseroles, 
sloppy joes, chili. I mean, anything where you would want ground beef tacos. You can put it on nachos, like, you know, whatever. The sky's your limit. Anything where you would want ground beef. The texture does change a little bit. It's like, it's just more broken down. It, it, it tastes more processed uh, because it is. It's been processed for 90 minutes. And so it is more broken down. But uh, it's, it's really good, especially if you're going to put some sort of sauce or something on it. And man, it's just really nice in the summer when you're working outside and you might not want to come in and cook for an hour and a half to have something that you can throw together really fast. So I am actually going to throw towels over this and start working on it when I get back in, but I'm going to go out and milk the cows first. Bear, are you ready to go outside? Y'all remember when I told you I needed to take the peas out before the heat or the heat was going to do them in? Well, I didn't pull them out and the heat did them in. I was thinking I might redeem it and save these um, for seed, but I'm not sure that the plants are going to support them long enough to dry out. Maybe they will. My passion flower is finally starting to get a lot of new growth, which is really cool. I'm really looking forward to that being wild and wayward. So, had a lovely visit with Dom and her family today. Just really nice to connect with other families, local here. Uh, she lives, they live a couple hours away from here, but they have a son. It's about the same age as Jackson, and they've really hit it off. So, we were talking about him coming back and spending a weekend with us and getting to spend some time with Jack this summer. Making the choice for the goats to go to new homes is admittedly one that was hard to make. But now that the decision is made and I'm getting to see people be blessed by my goats. So I've had now um, a few different families have gotten some goats from me, just a couple to each place. Bear, leave it. Come on, leave it. He saw a little chick out they got out of the fence um, but it has been very rewarding and I would so much rather see the goaty girls that I care about and that I've spent so much time with and energy on over the years I'm I'm glad to see them go to places where they will be fully appreciated for what they can do because here they're not getting milked and obviously we're like swimming in cow's milk Literally, I've been taking milk baths <laughs> because of so much milk. And uh, also because it's very good for your skin. But um, I I don't know. It was very hard, the decision to say, I'm not going to have goats anymore. But every time that I see them connecting with where they're supposed to be, that hard decision feels a lot easier to bear. So I think it's a matter of just kind of, I'm being transparent about rehoming the goats because plans change goals change and the goats are not what is best serving our homestead anymore and i don't feel like they're best being served here by not you know being used to their full potential um you know we could have just put them out in the woods and made them brush goats but i don't i don't feel like that is what's best for them being cared for and handled daily being milked regularly that's what's best for them so i'm glad to see that happen got my little stool hey girls hey pretty girls y'all i'm still completely in awe over how different helen looks from rude hope from when she came to us actually hope looks really different it is locked honey you know, i used to brag on you for not doing that I'm trying to get the milking done before Jeremiah gets back. He has gone to run a very, very important errand. And I'm really excited. And I really wanted to have this done before he gets back so that I can uh, show you guys the most imp important and exciting part of this video. I'm trying to set you guys up over here so I can get Hope on the stanchion without her knocking my camera off in the meantime. Come on. Come this way. Come on. I have to tie down her head so she doesn't do that.
Okay, now I take Helen, her green. Come on, you know what to do. There you go. Good girl. Look at Raph. Oh, the flies are so bad right now. I'm gonna hit Hope with this fly spray so she's not miserable. We get this stuff from the same place we get our, um, we have these creams and stuff, utter creams that are kind of like a natural way to battle mastitis, which we've only dealt with one time, but this is like got a bunch of oils, peppermint, lemongrass, lemon thyme, lavender, rosemary, eucalyptus, clove, and tea tree. So it's made for cows though, to combat flies. Hey, Papa T! Papa T just came over, but he doesn't see me up here. So, Raph is over there in the stall. You may have seen that. Um, Raph is our puppy. He's a livestock guardian puppy. He's part Great Pyrenees and part Anatolian. And he is, I'm sure, the makings of a great farm dog. Um, He's really sweet and very smart, but he's also a puppy. He's very mischievous. So um, he's been spending a lot more time out in the field, which is good. And you can see Gabriel like correcting him on things, which is also really good. And so far he's not done anything like really dumb with the animals, which is good because even some of the best dogs I've ever been around have had to learn from their mistakes with animals. Um, but he does have a tendency, he can get in the barn, he like digs under the, the doors. And Jeremiah had these gates for the barn, like to, so you could open the doors but have gates closed. And uh, Raph chewed the box, he got in the barn and chewed the box and scattered all of the hardware in the sand. So, we thought we were past the, times of restriction in the stall but we're still there he's only like four and a half months old so he's still very much a baby and still very much learning so Maya uh, I feel like I should tell really tell the story to do justice how big of a deal the end of this video is gonna be um, some of you know this story you've been here with us for a really long time and if you've been here since the beginning you know this story but many of you who are new especially since we moved to South Carolina you probably don't but I'm very excited right now because we're having a little bit of a full circle moment today and you are three inches behind this cow's hoof and it's really stressing me out. So why don't you hang tight while I milk and then afterwards I'll tell you the story. While we wait for Miss Hope to finish her food. Oh, I'm gonna take this bar off. Never mind, she's done. I'm gonna get her off the stand. So you guys may have heard Jeremiah and I talk about kind of honoring each other's dreams. It's something that's really important to us. And you know, whenever we first started out in like the homesteading life, this was very much my dream. It's something that Jeremiah really wanted to see happen for me, but you know, it wasn't really his thing. And there were a couple of things that Maya had said like when I first knew him and when we were first building our life together um, that were kind of dreams of his. One was that he really wanted to build his own house someday. That, that was something that was really important to him was to build a house. And a lot of people will ask us because we bought our mobile home to live in on our property and um, they'll say, why would you build a house? You have a perfectly good house because I want to honor my husband's dream. Um, 
and I mean I'm excited about the prospect of building a house in the future but that's not something that I have like spent my childhood day dreaming about by any means um, the other thing that was Maya's big dream was to have horses and we actually did have some horses before whenever we really first started our YouTube channel we'd gotten some rescue horses from the kill pens down in um, Louisiana so if you're not familiar with this there is a thing where um, buyers buy horses at auctions and basically anywhere they can get them for really cheap and they ship them um, overseas to be sold for meat and um, there are rescues that work in conjunction with that to try to find homes for that horses before they're shipped uh, it's kind of a controversial thing you know like since we did that we worked with those rescues I've, I've since learned that some people don't like that because it kind of perpetuates that whole industry because ultimately those people are buying them and then kind of preying on people who will rescue them um, and they're still making a profit on that and the horses still often get exposed to a lot but either way it worked out well for us we had we had beautiful horses and Maya really had like a special knack for them and it was something that when the lease we had we had a lease on land fell through and so we got another lease and we had that one for about a year and then that one fell through because the guy wanted to do something different and ultimately what it what it boiled down to is we didn't have a place to put our horses um and we had the opportunity essentially from a family that we knew that was willing to take them and it was one of those heartbreaking decisions of seasons have changed and um i i knew we were making the right decision but it was really hard because those horses felt like such a fulfillment of that dream for jeremiah but uh we felt really good about where they went we got updates knew that they were doing really well but it was hard and we from that point went into 2020 and then went into moving and it's been kind of a blur and anytime the topic of horses has come back up um Jeremiah's really kind of shut it down. Oh, maybe someday, you know. And I knew that it was, he was protecting himself from disappointment and heartbreak. But I also knew that dreams don't just go away. And I've always known that there would come a time again that would be time for Jeremiah to have horses again. Now, I love horses too. I love riding them. I love being around them. Um, but it's it's different. Like, he is like a horse whisperer. It is really, really cool to watch him interact with these animals because he just has this special gift for it. We gotta take this milk back in so it tastes good. You wanna get milk from your dairy animals cooled to under 40 degrees within two hours for the best taste and the longest uh, fridge life. Hello, girls. Hello. All right, milk is handled and I just remembered that I needed to come up here, turn the sprinkler off in the high tunnel. As you can see, the high tunnel is partially planted now. I keep getting questions about how we're watering all of this. <clears throat> and I have talked about it a little bit, but you have a well, um, it's a very deep well that, oh, hi pigs. Y'all, these little pigs are the pigs that were born here on this farm. Look, that's how big they are already. Isn't that crazy? So the well does enable us to water all of this without an insane water bill. Uh, the other thing is that we don't have our irrigation run yet. We do, we do have the water lines run to each garden section. We've not run with like drip tape or soakers from the water line. So we're just using sprinklers right now, which is not ideal. Um, ideally, you wanna keep the water off of your plants and water at the base. But sometimes we don't get to do things ideally. Sometimes we have to make do for the time being. And that's what the sprinklers are doing right now. So here in this greenhouse, in the middle sections, are different citrus plants um, and then I do also have a couple of bananas that are supposed to bear here in this area so all of this citrus should be hardy here in my zone 
Uh, it might need some protection during the winter, which is why it's in this high tunnel. And we may have to protect it even further when it's quite cold here. But uh, we'll see. A few of the citrus things I got, I'm going to leave in pots because they... Uh, they would get too large in the high tunnel, but everything that I have planted are plants that should not exceed about eight feet, and I can prune them and keep them lower. Um, so this is going to be a lovely tropical paradise. It's the next morning, obviously, um, and Maya got delayed last night and did not get home until after dark. So now we are here to introduce you to <clears throat> one of our new horses, this morning. Jeremiah was up before me, made my coffee, and was outside before I got out of bed, which never happens. Because <laughs> he was so excited. Daddy, you just got roasted. <laughs> you touched his mane? So I was telling you guys yesterday how we had horses and then had to change that. Um, and that it was kind of heartbreaking, but it just wasn't the right season. And that's something that Maya has been really hanging on to is having the opportunity again. Well, <clears throat> about a month ago, my, um, my ex mother-in-law, you guys have met her here on the vlog before. She's one of my best friends and she came up to visit us and, uh, her and her husband and we spent some days with them. It was really good. And I told her then, I was like, I can just feel it in my gut that horses are coming soon. I just, I know it. I'm not going to push it because this has to be Maya's decision. Because ultimately, though it was, it was hard for me, it was, it was his heartbreak. So I'm not going to push this. I'm going to just leave it alone. And whenever he says he's ready, you know, I'll be supportive. And wasn't very long after that that he started talking about it and saying that he was ready to kind of start looking. The boys are going to get a new battery because my camera's almost dead and I really would hate to go to introduce Bosco, the horse, and you guys uh, might not get to see it because my camera died. Maya has been looking, we've been kind of like looking at different ads in different places and we knew what we wanted. We knew we wanted two horses. Um, no more than that right now, although we do really love the idea of having like horses for the kids and stuff like that later We wanted to get back in it in a way that was manageable <clears throat> and uh, Maya answered an ad for a horse that he found that he really liked and when he went to see him He, he specifically did not take his trailer because he did not want to make an emotional decision and he went and met him and really liked him and then when he was there the woman who was selling him said I actually have another one that I couldn't even bring myself to list because she was in much the same situation that we have been in and that a lot of people have been in that her season of life was changing she was pregnant and she had just other things going on and these were her beloved horses mm -hmm. and so Jeremiah ended up meeting the other one as well and uh, agreeing later he came home slept on it talked to me, showed me photos, we talked it out, and he messaged her and said he would like both horses. So we only have one here today. The other one is being brought because we don't actually have a horse trailer, we have a livestock trailer, and um, the other one did not fit. She, she's taller, so. All right, y'all ready to see Bosco? The kids are coming back with the battery and we're about to let him out in the pasture for the first time. Maya, I know you said you were not going to get a horse in here. You were like, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do all this. But I knew whenever you built this horse barn. This Listen, barn. I wasn't sure what size cows you were getting. <laughs> Whatever. So I just made sure. You needed those 12 foot ceilings in case my you ever seen a cow. You ever seen a cow grow up? up? <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> no. <laughs> that doesn't. Ain't Clifford the Big Red Dog, but a cow. <laughs> hey, Wes. Yes. <laughs> ben, did you give her Wes to is are you also excited yeah. I came out here this morning and Jeremiah and Wes are out here like first thing in the morning like excited little boys <laughs> these, these men love horses did I give you the battery uh yes you gave me the battery thank you I'm about to put it in y'all ready to go see him yes and you're ready to introduce him to our friends on YouTube yeah, yeah. He is. where does he go did he go back in the house yeah there, there. he is Bosco Bosco Lemon Matthew so he rubbed a little bit of his hair off on his forehead. Um, 
because she got she was telling us she got a bag of alfalfa and um he kept getting in it so he rubbed his forehead hair off but it'll come back but goodness isn't he beautiful are you a handsome man introduce you to my camera you're gonna be seeing a lot of this <laughs> so he's eight years old um gelding quarter horse so he's been used for working he's been around cattle a lot and um worked cattle but also done like different show events and um he is just a beautiful horse and she was so excited <laughs> she was so excited to find a good solid home for him and that's why you know she brought out the other horse which was kind of like her baby who's an older horse more one that is like bomb proof safe for the kids this this guy is more um jeremiah's level he's just he's a little fast so he's not he's not a kid horse will you grab that mug thank you but he's uh, he's got a really sweet personality hey, yeah baby so uh i don't really want to ride a horse yeah i know you you're a little nervous about that you don't have to ride anything i think someday you might want to but it's okay if you're too nervous right now we're not going to push that okay don't like do that. He's a gentleman. He runs a whole business. He runs a business? Yeah. Yes. What business? Costco, Costco. <laughs> he runs Costco. Did you hear this, Maya? He's a gentleman. And he how runs his own business. How do we associate gentlemen with Costco? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You Did you hear what Wes said? He fly sprayed him, so if if you touch him, don't wipe your eyes, okay? He's got fly spray on him. Um. Hey, you know with horses they're different than cows, so you don't get right behind them, right? Because they kick backwards, not like the cows. Yeah, I've seen that <laughs> beautiful. What? He's so beautiful. Oh, there you go. There he goes. He goes. He's pretty, isn't he? Hallie and Gabe are having to check him out. <laughs> like, ah! Gabriel ran to check him out, and now he got it close to him, and he's like, "Uh, oh, never mind." Well, Hope's got to make her introductions. Hope has been around a horse before. Hannah has a horse. Yeah, I saw. Is it like and a he's obviously, he's, he's done a lot of work with cows, so. Hey. He's pretty unbothered by the ball. Hey, Look Mom. Yeah. Has, I, is it like, uh, Hannah's cow, I mean, not cow, a uh, horse a foal? No, it's all, she's an old mare. It looks like the animals of the farm are just like, well. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Look at him. <laughs> just standing around looking at him. <laughs> I guess we are too though, huh? <laughs> well guys, thank you for hanging out with us today. We we'll <laughs> we'll we bless you. We bless you. Until next time.